Mark Saint, Tim Doubleday. I'm the CFO for Burger King um, in the UK, um, and I also sit on the advisory board for UK Hospitality, um, and have the privilege of chairing their Sustainability Committee, um, as well as that <coughs> of the <coughs> excuse me, of the of the Hospitality Sector Council. And yes, you didn't miss that. I am an accountant by background, um, and I often get asked, you know, what does an accountant doing talking about sustainability? But really, that comes back to really those of us who have a, if you're a stewardship responsibility um, within, within our businesses. Um, you know, as a member of the C-suite, you are there to look at and manage the risks and the opportunities within, within the businesses. Um, and in today's society, you know, for businesses to succeed, we have to be a resilient business. Um, and that's not just resilient in terms of sustainability, although that is a big part, but also that means having long-term prospects and future value for your, for your business. And you can't have that if you don't take ESG policies seriously in today's world. Um, and if I may um, just quote a little bit from a piece of research that KPMG did recently that I was, um, I was shared with me, then the survey that they did of CEOs I thought was very interesting. The downside of failing to meet ESG expectations, that survey said 25% of people said higher cost of finance or difficulty in raising finance. Yep, that's me. I, I do that all the time. Top three question you ever get asked is about what you are doing on your ESG strategy and is it credible? The second one was about recruitment and challenges in recruiting people, 22%. But another 10% actually said disengaged employees. So put those two together, big area. And then the third one was around a competitive advantage and for competitors getting a competitive advantage, again, over 20%. And interestingly, <coughs> one in six CEOs said that it was a threat to their continued tenure in their job if they didn't meet the uh, ESG expectations that were had. So very interesting how you know, at board level people are considering um, ESG strategies. So a little bit of background. In 2008, uh, the financial crash in 2008, a lot of people said that corporate responsibility activities would be put on ice due to the recession. Very similar kind of discussions that are happening today. In reality, it actually accelerated corporate social responsibility, or CSR as it was known at that particular point. And I think it moved now, and we've moved now from that area of corporate responsibilities to actions actually becoming an integral part of our businesses. It's not sitting there as a standalone function, it's actually integrated into everything that we do. And businesses have actually learnt the value of having those sorts of values or the value of responsible business um, in the way that they conduct themselves. An example, um, and I apologise to Mark Chapman for pinching a couple of his points and slides in all of this, but if you look at the average, cons the average restaurant, the average hospitality outlet, it consumes over 350,000 kilowatts of energy a year. That's the equivalent to 18 houses. So as a particular focus, if you think about reduction in energy, particularly when we've seen it going up threefold, fourfold in cost, then simple actions can reduce the energy output of a restaurant by over 30%. Closing the fridge door, turning the lights off. I was at a dinner on Monday night and someone, there's a guy from Pizza Express there, who started talking about LED light bulbs. Now, I thought I was the only boring person who spoke a lot about LED light bulbs, but it really, really does make a big difference. Less than a 12-month payback, absolute no-brainer, and particularly in today's environment, these are things that we can do as businesses that are right for sustainability, but also reduce the cost to our, to our businesses. So we're in an environment at the moment, we have geopolitical changes, we have a global pandemic that we've just come through, we have a government, a new government, one that's going to have an election, um, in the not-too-distant future. Um, and there's a lot of talk there about putting um, certain of the sort of sustainability, the zero carbon strategies on, on ice. But actually what's not going to happen in all of that is some of the actions that government are taking and are going to continue to take around such things as plastic packaging tax that we've already seen, deposit return schemes and so on. So these things are going to continue to hit us as an industry um, over the next couple of years. And I'll come back to... To, to that in a moment. But what we do know is that you know, companies who are aware of this, who look at public opinion and respond um, to those emerging trends tend to do better. Those who don't, they do so at their peril. 
Um, and a lot of the work that we've been doing from a UK hospitality and hospitality sector council perspective and the Zero Carbon Forum is talking about how do we actually work together as a sector um, in areas which are not competitive for us as businesses, but how can we actually work together to make a change and make things happen. If we look at the, uh, the actions that happened, so in um, 2020 and 2021, a lot of work was done by the sector, uh, working with government you know, to manage the, the COVID pandemic. And on the back of that, July 2021, the government launched its hospitality sector strategy, which was focusing on three areas, reopening, recovery, and resilience for the, for the sector. Um, and in reopening, that strategy sets out measures that were including highlighting opportunities for job seekers coming into our sector as we tried to get sites, sites open. In recovery, it was aimed at boosting business and consumer confidence um, and helping the sector return to profitability. And we know that that's now completely had to go and we're having to completely refocus on that. Um, and we're in good hands then for, there because Kate Nicholl is running that team. Um, and that is a major, major focus for the Hospitality Sector Council. And then the third area was about looking at ways to, for the sector to prove, improve its resilience. And that's not just resilience in terms of green initiatives, but it is about things like boosting creativity um, and also making hospitality um, a career option of, of choice. Um, so in, in all of that, the Hospitality Sector Council is now that sort of preferred medium um, of the sector working with government to help co-create um, some solutions, particularly in, in my sense, um, in the area of the sustainability group there that I was asked to, uh, I was asked to chair. Um, and within the sustainability committee, um, we have two subgroups. We have one focused on waste um, and we have one focused on zero carbon. Um, and that sustainability committee itself um, has been structured to meet the terms of reference that we have, which is that co-creation of initiatives um, to improve sustainability in the, in the sector. Um, the committee is made up of a broad group of people um, from all parts of the sector and also the, the sector's supply chain. And the reason for that is that 90% of the carbon emissions of our sector come from our supply chain. You know, we are a business that we, you know, we focus on physical presence, you know, we're an agribusiness in terms of the products that we use and those drive that, that sector. Um, so far, you know, we've been um, going for about a year now, so we've recruited people into those different groups. Um, and we're just issuing at the moment three papers, one which is a jargon buster um, on the sector uh, and on sustainability, which I think is particularly useful to small and medium-sized companies across our sector. Um, a second one that summarizes the targets that we have as a sector, some of which we've developed ourselves, but most of which are responding to government um, or other, other uh, political and wider bodies. Um, and then the third one, a guide to energy reduction to particularly focus on on that at the moment. So in terms of the initiatives that we are, are looking at, so the waste team um, is chaired by a lady called Charlotte Wright from Elio. Um, and Charlotte's done a lot of work in her own business um, on waste problems. Um, the waste team is focusing on things like single use plastic consumption, um, but is really taking um, food waste as a lead um, in, in, its, in its area. Um, and this is something that we think is a, a major opportunity for us as a sector, working with businesses and government departments like RAP um, to actually focus on that. Um, other things, you know, we, we know already, we've had the plastic packaging tax in April, single-use plastic bans from June, you know, collection and packaging reforms are coming in, deposit return schemes starting in Scotland, moving on. You know, all these things are coming at us more and more and more. Um, and this is a great opportunity for us to help guide that, guide that agenda. Um, and the Zero Carbon Forum is, help, forum is helping to inform the Hospitality Sector Council um, on the particular initiatives that we should, that we should take. Um, and just to return to a point that, that, that Kate made at the very beginning, the two key areas there, 2030, to abate all our avoidable direct emissions, scope one and two, basically what happens inside your business, and then 2040, trying to abate all those supply chain issues. Um, so that's the, the scope threes. And that's really where the area of collaboration becomes the main area that we need to, we need to do. None of us, however big our businesses are, can actually influence global supply chains if we work alone. So as an initiative, the Zero Carbon Forum um, was actually a first across sectors. Um, there are over 30 members to that forum now. 
um, a lot of whom you know you would see as big high street competitors you know yes McDonald's are a part of that as well as us and that's great because it gives us that opportunity of consistency of, of views and of and of collaboration importantly the businesses involved in that are all funding it so everybody's writing a check to be involved in that we have a CEO CFO forum that meets every six months everybody turns up and I think that just shows the kind of view and responsibility that people are taking towards this as an initiative. And the membership of that continues to, continues to grow. So let me just talk to you a little bit about some of the things, hopefully as examples of what we at Burger King um, have been doing. Um, and I think in, in here, some things that certainly as a bigger business we can do, but things that certainly I think all companies across the sector can, can do. So over the last five years since we bought the master franchise for Burger King in the UK, uh, we've developed a sustainability strategy which we call Burger King for Good. Um, and that's integral in our business. It brings together all of our ESG commitments, but it makes sure that every part of our business understands those and takes those into account in everything we do from a day-to-day -day basis. It's built off a global policy um, that the Burger King brand has, which is what's called the Clean Products or TNT, um, Trust in Taste strategy and that's basically all Burger King main items do not contain any artificial colors or flavorings or preservatives and that we then follow through in terms of that cleanliness into other parts of our business so BK for good is fundamental to us it has five key pillars good for the planet animal welfare good for people good for guests and importantly good for the communities in which we work we have that cross-functional approach Environment was a main area that we took initially because environment was the one that we thought was the most relevant and had the biggest material impact on our business. But we're now looking more at areas like diversity and inclusion as significant parts of, of, of the business. And we've made good progress. You know, we've done a lot on energy tracking um, and reducing our energy. Yes, LED light bulbs. Um, we've taken plastic toys out of our business, 300,000 tons of plastic a year. Um, we recycle our, wa our waste oil, all the sort of normal things that a lot of you would do, but actually make, in little steps, make quite a big impact. And in doing that, we've halved our scope one and scope two carbon emissions since 2019. So we made a big step on that journey um, in following that through. A couple of examples of initiatives. So climate action, um, to come back to energy again. Yes, we work with the Zero Carbon Forum, a carbon statement, um, and we've worked very hard on reducing our energy commitments, working together with Zero Carbon Forum and other companies and continuing to look at ways in which we can improve the environment um, for our customers and also for the communities in which we, in which we work. Things like um, reusable packaging. Um, so in reusable packaging, um, we did a trial um, with a company called Loop um, and looked at developing reusable burger boxes um, and reusable cups, a bit like the ones that you would get if you go to a Wimbledon or a Twickenham, um, pay a pound for a deposit, bring it back. Now, interestingly, sort of early days of the trial, we had a lot of people paying the pound. We didn't have a lot of people bringing it back. Um, so I think we learned two things from that. Well, one is the actual quality of the product was too good um, and it makes a really nice lunchbox um, and it's cheaper than buying a bit of Tupperware from, from wherever else. Um, but also, it's an attitudinal thing. Um, and that's where as a sector we need to work together on things like reusable packaging. You know, you can go into lots of places to press or whatever and get a reduction on your coffee if you take your own cup. It's around, but it's an attitude thing that we need to continue to work on. Um, and we worked on that particularly, um, again, with um, Coca-Cola and Hubbub um, doing um, a trial called Loop. Um, sorry, doing a, a trial, it was almost Loop, um, where we looked at young men's attitudes um, to littering um, and actually how do we change those attitudes um, you know you see a lot of packages you know particularly fast food um, packaging lying around it's not a great advert for your business that it's lying around on the streets of London um, and you know there's more and more going on with local authorities there um, and something that I think we as a big business can do but also all businesses can do in looking at what kind of reusable packaging you do how you collect litter in your restaurants sponsoring bins in local communities um, and so on so um, a good example for us and something that we need to continue to to work on so to come back to an integrated approach and probably to you know to conclude there um, I think the launch of 
UK Hospitality Sustainability Commitment and Guide is a great initiative. Um, it ties in with everything we're doing from a government perspective. Um, it ties in with the Hospitality Sector Council. It ties in with work we're doing with Sustainable Restaurant Association, um, with the Brewery Association and so on. So it's pan sector. Um, we can all do something um, in meeting those commitments. It's a journey for all of us and those little steps do matter. And where we have big businesses taking initiatives such as Zero Carbon Forum, what's really important is the outputs of those are provided free to all those family and independent businesses across our sector so we can all move forward together as a, as a sector. So hopefully that was uh, interesting and useful, a couple of practical examples, and um, I know, hope you enjoy the, the rest of the, the day. Um, you know, please do look at the, the sustainability commitments and... Um, you know, if, if you want to talk to me about any of them, I can help, then please do pick up the phone. Thank you very much.